After one year of good use, it's time to say goodbye to the beautiful living moss roof. Our bushcraft shed is of great importance to keep dry tools, firewood, and building materials related to the roundhouse build. It sheds light rain, but often not the kind of rain we get to deal in Ireland with. It eagerly awaits to get a proper natural roof, as well as the roundhouse. For the roundhouse roof, we have chosen water reed to be the material of choice among other materials. The reed was harvested all ourselves by hand. We now have a farm shed full of reed awaiting to be put on the roof. But besides the bulk of the reed being meant for the roundhouse, we were also gifted a little bit of old reed, perfect to thatch the bushcraft shed with. Thanks to the local Tetch Master Lady, who also gives us great advice on our thatching projects. Let's dive into the beautiful craft of thatching. This roll of reed will be put on the ridge of the roof. Ridge rolls are normally made with cordage, but as it is not the right time of the year yet to easily make natural cordage, and we don't want to use synthetics but only natural materials, I figured soaked willow rods might work as well. The old school way of thatching without steel wire and screws requires a lot of thatching spars, in Irish also known as scallops.
They're made from split hazel and willow sticks. For this shed roof, I'm gonna need a couple hundreds of them. During the thatching process, the exposed, deeper parts of the thatch should not get wet. Otherwise, the thatch could start rotting from the inside and wouldn't last as long. Dylan once found this antique knife in an old shed. I have the honor to put it to our first use. I might first have some more sharpening to do. For now, the folding saw is the winning reed cutter. The roof of the shed isn't particularly high and these bundles are already as long as the roof itself. Because the reed will be stacked upwards in layers overlapping each other, I will have to cut the bundles a little shorter for the thatch not to become too thick towards the top of the roof. Although the knife was near razor sharp, the job still wasn't easy. Reed is apparently very hard to cut. Tomorrow is another day, but first there's always more scallops to be made. More scallops crafted at home. This pile with the first scallops I ever made took me probably three days to gather and cut. But luckily I'm becoming faster and faster at the crafting of scallops. Just before appliance on the roof, 
It is bent with a twisted motion to form a sort of wooden staple. It's the essential component that will have to keep the thatch in place on the roof structure. The reed is held down by wooden horizontal rods called the liggers. These liggers are then stapled down with the scallops, keeping the reed in place. The moss was left on the roof underneath the reed to form a base layer for the scallops to grip in. The scallops have just about enough grip in the moss and in between the closely aligned roof rafters for the thatch to stay in place. The reed is then driven upwards in place with the help of a legget, which I made in the previous bushcraft camp video. The main reason this reed is not of high quality and value is the large amount of weeds within the bundles. Weeds not being tough and hollow will quickly start and enhance rot in the thatch and shorten the longevity of the roof. Here I'm pulling out cattail stems. Once the thatch is laid and the job is done well, the idea is that rain only wets the outside of the thatch and it can then dry quickly after. And so it can last for 30 years here in Ireland. But my thatch will likely not last that long due to multiple factors, among which the bad quality of the reef. And so a new layer of reed is put on, covering the scallop fixings of the previous layer and forming a homogeneous roof with only the reed's bottom ends being visible. And so I try yet another tool for cutting reed. Kukri? Nah. Trust me, those blades are decently sharp. In the end, just my ordinary bushcraft knife, cutting less at the time, turned out to be the tool to cut reed for now. But we should definitely look into getting a serrated knife. There's one tool that I hadn't given priority to make for already quite a while now. But the time to do so was really there now.
took me quite some time of messing about, adjusting the leather steps and holes. At least the two outer steps on both ends of the ladder have to be connected to the side poles for the ladder not to come apart. There's always more firewood to cut. Also the younger generation loves to learn and be in the outdoors, giving us a hand. Fair play to you, boy. With the soon waterproof shed and livable house, we better work ahead of ourselves and have a stash of nicely dried firewood ready, instead of scavenging some barely dried dead wood the day of burning.
Mr. Ken, one more bundle, please. Mr. Julian, on it. Thanks, mate. I have quite a special roof in mind. Besides reed, the idea is to also implement another material. Back to the bog. Coming up in part 2, we finish the shed roof with Heather, giving it a very special look and the first spring overnight. For more bushcraft videos like this, also check out the roundhouse series. Perhaps give a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the Smooth Fixed and see you on the next one. And check out our Patreon site to support us and for extra content.